this is a demonstration of the my adaptation of the pulsar circuit from the Buchla Music Easel. So this is the pulsar itself. It's got a couple op amps, um, a couple of CMOS chips, and assorted other doodads. We need something to control using the output from the pulsar. So for that, we're going to use the timbre generating circuit from the Music Easel. This is the adaptation that you can see see more details about in another video. This is the uh, trigger control for the pulsar. So the f I don't actually have the kind of switch that they use in the original easel, which is sort of an on, off, and temporary on switch. So what I'm going to do is put down the camera and try to emulate uh, that just by holding, I, I'm sort of dangling the switch in this unstable middle position to indicate off, and I'm going to hit it to do one pulse. There we go. So let me do another pulse. So you, you can do it as a one shot, but the most interesting is when you start the pulser and then set it to feedback so it free runs. So here we've got a pulser and it's happily pulsing and I can control the pulse rate. I can make it go very low. Or I can speed it up. And this sucker will run well up into the audio range. Of course, since it's a music easel type circuit, and just a boucle circuit in general, you may suppose that the uh, pulse rate is actually voltage controllable, which it is. So let me get let me get a sine wave coming from a Synthtech uh, LFO 3, let's see, what is it, it's 390, oh, and to give also props, this is a Blassett uh, power supply that I'm using for everything that I got from John Blassett, very cool guy. Let me plug into the... So now let me turn up the trimmer. So here it goes fast. And now it's going slow. So I've got a very slow LFO going into it. Let me speed that up. Let me crank this up. So that's kind of fun. Let me put in a, a square wave. So that's kind of cool. Let me turn up the rate of that. So you got this weird little rhythm going. Let me turn down the influence. So that's kind of a ridiculous amount of fun there. So let me turn down the voltage control here. And you may say to yourself, okay, well that's fine, I've got a downward going sawtooth type wave. I think Buchla calls those ramps, don't remember for sure. What if I want something that goes up? Well, the circuit here, the original easel has a inverter, see the inverter that converts 0 to 10 volts back to, to 10 to 0 volts. So let me take my um, timbre control input and plug that into the output of the inverter. And you don't have to use this the inverter with the pulsar. The inverter just happens to be on the stand same board, but it's a standalone circuit. So let's plug that into the output. And let's now take another patch cord. Um, that's my attempt to magically summon another patch cord. Okay, here we've got another patch cord. Oh, that's too long of a patch cord. Um, and let's plug the input of the inverter 
into the output of the pulser itself. So let's see, where did the output of the pulser go? Oh, the output of the pulser is up here. Talk about this a little more in a second. So that's the output of the pulse. There we go. Now we have a nice upper going sawtooth wave. So that's kind of fun. The other thing we can do here is listen to a few of the um, other things we can do. For instance, the I, as I mentioned earlier, the um, pulser itself can run up into the audio range. So what I'm going to do now is take the pulser and plug it straight into the speakers. Notice I started with this off and I'm going to start turning it up slowly. The reason I'm doing that is that the, the pulser output is a Buchla style control voltage. So it's running 0 to 10 volts, probably has something like, you know, a, a 5 volt DC offset in it. So I don't want to pop my speakers with that. So I'm plugging it into the output now. We're going to turn this up. So there you hear now this is the pulser output. CV. Let me turn that up. This is the pulser control voltage output, I should say. And you should hear the saltiest alloy. Turn that down. So again, this is just the raw pulser CV output. Notice it goes well up into the audio range. So let me unplug that. And now there's also a pulser. The, the, it's the pulser pulse output as opposed to the pulser continuous CV output. So let me plug into that, and we should hear this kind of buzzy waveform. Let me turn this down again. Again, this would ha should have probably have a DC offset on it, so I want to be very careful plugging that in speakers. So that buzzy wave you hear, that's the pulse output. So that's like an impulse train. That's an another video I'm using this to control the envelope generator. Okay, so that's, um, let me turn that down. So that's a demo of the board. A few other features we have on here. This is actually one of the more complicated boards in that it inherits some more of the original easel. If you see this uh, brown and orange wire, this is connecting a 15 volt supply to the A enable. There's also a B enable. So for those pulses you just heard and the control voltages, there's separate A and B outputs that are turned on or off depending on whether A enable or B enable are set to a logical high. If it's useful, there's also an A naught and a B naught that comes out. This is just a weird bit of the original easel circuitry that got inherited. And this is to handle being able to control the easel from the, both the front panel and from the plug-in card. The other thing that I haven't tested the functionality yet, you see this thing that says Z1 and Z2? These are actually just pass-through gates. That uh, Same thing with Y1 and Y2. These are disconnected when B is off. The B enables off when B enables on, those are connected. So it's basically an electronic switch. Um, again, that's a bit of the original easel circuitry that has to do with rooting the keyboard or stuff from the card or various and sundry things. And it was just already there in the circuit, so I put it in. I haven't actually tested it because it's a sort of an afterthought, low priority for me. But somebody wanted an electronic switch of some kind uh, that could come in useful, or or if somebody was crazy enough to actually try adapting the full easel in some fashion. Um, the, this could come in handy, but I haven't tested it. Um, I do need to make a revision of this board. There's, there's a little resistor. Notice it's, this normally goes here, but it was going to the wrong place, so I had to take it out and make this little jumper, which is not very elegant or beautiful. There's a place on the bottom of the board. There's, there's a couple of adjacent pins that needed jumped. Let me zoom back out. <laughs> um, but so I do need to make a revision of this, but this is close enough that if people are comfortable um, making making this jump, and they're okay with that, I'll probably sell this board for a couple bucks off what the revision will go for just to get rid of the boards and because people are anxious to get, get working on these. I think that's about it. Oh, there's also a trimmer. This controls the pulse rate. Nothing too magical there. If you wanted to try to trim it so that some front panel setting met some exact frequency, you could you could twiddle that.